Uh, welcome back folks to the next in this series of videos about how to use SQLite Admin to build a database and eventually how to maintain the data in it. Uh, in the last video we ended up uh, creating uh, indexes and seeing how to modify them and delete them and in this video I want to talk about triggers. Um, triggers I always feel don't get used enough in databases. They're a way of having the database take care of the logic of extra things that need to happen when a row is inserted or updated or deleted from a table. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you in this example, just going back to the tables again, if you remember when we created the CDs table, we had this field or column called CD total time. And that is supposed to be uh, the total time uh, of all the tracks on the CD. And sure enough, each track has a track time. So what I want to do here is say, OK, any time a row is inserted, deleted, or the track time in the tracks table is updated, I want to update um, the CD total time. And I can define triggers to do that for me. I don't have to worry about doing it in my application. And even if I did it in my application, I would still want a way to make sure that if data was added elsewhere, for instance from SQLite Admin, that uh, that total was maintained correctly. So here are the triggers. There are none in the database at the moment. I'm going to add one. And give it a name. This first one is going to be what happens when an entry is inserted into the tracks table. And I'm going to say that after it's been successfully inserted, what I want to do is update uh, the CD total time. So that's done with a SQL update statement. Say update albums, uh, sorry, update CDs, set CD total time equals CD total time plus the value of the track time from the row that was just inserted and SQL Lite provides two special keywords new and old to refer to the current and previous values of columns in a table in the case of insert, only the new keyword is valid because there was no old. So I'm going to say new dot track time. So now, every time a row is inserted, the new track time will be added to the. Uh, I don't know why I capitalize that. It doesn't really matter, but it's, uh, just fix it. But we've got to make sure that uh, it updates the CD total time in the right row in the CDs table. So we had a where uh, clause to that to say where CDs dot CD ID equals tracks. Dot, sorry, not tracks. Once again, use the new keyword new dot track ID. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so now uh, every time an entry is inserted into the tracks table, um, SQLite will automatically take care of increasing the total time for that CD by the uh, time for that track. 
Okay, so now let's do the next simple one, which is what happens if the track is deleted. Of course, this time I want to subtract the time. So I'm going to say after successful delete update CDs set. Time equals CD total time minus, and remember we've got new and old keywords. In the case of a delete, there is only old because it, the new is now gone, there isn't one. So it's old dot track time and same where clause, and again. And then finally, we want to say if a row in the tracks table is updated, but not just any column in there, specifically the uh, track time, then we want to change the total time again. So once again, after update. But this time I only want to do something if the track time gets changed. And you can have multiple columns down here if you need to. In this case we don't need to. So once again update CDs, CD, total time Set CD total time equals CD total time minus, in this case we've got the old and the new value available to us, so we want to subtract the old track time. new track time and we need once again to tell SQLite how to find the right CD row and uh, since the uh, CD ID and the track won't have changed since we know that because we told it only when the track time changes uh, we can use either new or old for that Okay, so now, no matter what happens to the rows in the tracks table, the CD total time will always be correct. And if we go down here, under tracks, you can see that we've got those three triggers. You highlight one see the information about it down here and you can scroll through. This is really just a convenience really to see the full information you need to go to the trigger screen. Um, Alright, I think uh, there are other things we could do. I think one thing I might do here is on the CDs table I'm thinking about it CD total time I don't think has a default value right now so I'm going to modify it and give it a default value of zero just to make sure all the arithmetic works correctly um, just about uh, finishes this video off for triggers and in the next one 
talk about views.